Hello and welcome to Gloomhaven in about three minutes. It is a game for one to four players. It has a solo mode. Playing time is around one to two hours per mission. It's a complicated game. The town of Gloomhaven is surrounded by evil forces. You are an adventurer with your own reasons for coming to Gloomhaven, who has teamed up with like-minded individuals to form a party. Together you will complete your personal goals while uncovering the evil that threatens the town of Gloomhaven. The campaign is made up of a number of scenarios and each scenario has its own objectives. Cooperative. Each player is working together to defeat the enemies, but each has their own personal goals as well. Card management. Your deck of cards represents your powers, but also your energy. Player turn. First of all, you must decide on a mission to do from the map. Then you can access that entry in the book and set up the game map accordingly. Each player will get a private objective that they may complete to get additional upgrades to their character. You have a character board and a deck of cards. Your deck size limit is static. For this character, it is eight cards. You also have equipment. Some is one use per mission, while others can be refreshed when you rest. On your turn, you will select two cards to play. One card will be the leading card, and its initiative score will determine when you act. You can use the top of one card and the bottom of the other, and you can choose freely which card to use. In this case, we will use Fork Beam to attack two enemies at up to range three with a strength of two. You then turn over cards from your attack modifier deck and apply the results. The first card gives plus two bonus damage, while the second card is a miss. The used cards go in the discard pile, unless they have this icon in which case they go in your burn pile. Burn cards cannot normally be reclaimed during the scenario. There are loads of potential effects including ongoing buffs, area effect attacks, heals, looting cards and fast movement. A card can always be used for two melee attack or two movement as well. The monsters each have their own action decks, stats and modifier deck. Monsters can be regular or elites. If you are damaged by an attack, you can take it as damage on your dial, burn a card from your hand or two from your discard pile. If you ever run out of health or cards, you are defeated. You can rest to regain your discards, but you'll have to burn a card each time you do so. There is also this element board which changes during play. Some cards will show an elemental icon, and when they do, you advance that element one space right. Elements can also be spent by cards for bonuses. This one uses a fire and an ice to get extra effects. Some cards allow you to move over enemies and terrain on the board. When enemies are defeated, they drop a coin in their space. You can collect these by ending your turn on them or by using a loot card. At the end of the round, all elements drop one step. Play continues until the scenario goals are complete. Why would you like this game? If you like tactical combat and resource management, this game is excellent at both of those. Every turn is a tough decision about what cards to use and how to use them. There is a huge variety of enemies to face, each requiring a different approach, each character class plays differently, and while I've only seen five classes in play at time of this review, they have all felt incredibly different. We still have this many character boxes to open as well. There are a lot of ways to improve your character, including adding new combat modifiers cards to your deck as well as equipment and action cards. There are also city and road cards that add story elements and random events to each session. And there's just a lot of material from tile decorations to map parts to the stack of monsters. The best thing about this game is the sheer amount of content it has in the box. With nearly a hundred missions there's an awful lot of game to discover. However, the game is not cheap and you will want to play a lot to get your money's worth, either by playing it solo or finding a regular group. If either of these sound like a problem, it might not be for you. It's also a combat focused game and while there are story and character elements, the bulk of your time in game is spent fighting monsters. Ah, oh, and there's a lot of icons and effects to learn. If you like the idea of card management and intense gameplay, but don't want to commit to a campaign, check out Mage Knight. And if you want a campaign that's more story driven, try Near and Far. Gloomhaven, it's bigger on the inside. If you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and check out our Patreon.